Hey everybody, here's the power supply out of the $25 value village Dell. Had to replace this power supply with another one in that computer because I kept getting the amber power LED when plugging in the system. So I eventually replaced this power supply and the computer completely stopped with the amber LED and I was able to sell it. So anyways, I've got this power supply here and we'll take a look inside of it today. Curious why it's causing that computer to get the amber flashing LED on the power button. Here's a look at the spec label. Pause a few specs. This power supply is manufactured by Newton which Newton and Delta seem to be really really similar to each other if not the same company this power supply I believe is a clamshell design it's time to go ahead and figure that out so we can have a look inside these Dell power supplies are very very strange the thing I can't stand about them is they're too thick from top to bottom so I can't use them in a standard ATX case or most standard ATX cases anyway that have a have a lip inside so let me say I'm gonna get these screws loose and we're gonna have a look inside this thing to be honest this thing is built very well What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if there's anything visual, I mean, now I can see visually wrong with this thing on the inside. There may not be anything wrong with this power supply. It may just be the computer not liking this power supply. <clears throat> For instance, maybe this power supply does not like to turn on immediately when it's plugged in. That Dell system likes to turn the power supply on for about a few seconds and cut it back off and obviously if it doesn't want to do that it'll trigger an error on the motherboard and cause that amber LED that's what I'm thinking anyway and when I sold that system I told the owner now just replace the power supply and to notify me if he had any problems and I have not got any calls about that system so I'm assuming it's working just fine so that's four screws now let's continue looking for screws. These power supplies are extremely weird. This is a matter of getting it to pry open, pretty much. Yep, that's all it really was. Yep, definitely a clamshell design. And of course, if I didn't mention already, this is a 375 watt power supply. And this power supply had what I would pretty much call a mystery to itself. This power supply has a fan lead sticking out the back of it. And without this fan lead plugged in, the fan would not even work at all. So I believe somebody has been in this thing. I think somebody replaced the fan with this one. It's a rather nice one. It's a, it's a Nidic Beta SL. It's a good quality fan. And it's not even zip tied to these other wires. So we're going to get this pulled apart here. yeah have a look at this the fan is not even connected to the power supply PCB now usually if a power supply offers or at least in my experience if a computer power supply offers the ability to um, have it controlled by the motherboard it would usually have a circuit that would take over and run the fan if there was no motherboard power being supplied and some power supplies have a tachometer lead coming out of them to plug into the motherboard 
But, anyways, that all being said, let's go ahead and start having a look here. This thing's built like a tank. Has passive power factor correction. It's a 375 watt unit, I believe it said it was. Okay, the spec labels on the casing. Let's go ahead and have a look at it one more time. See, 375 watts. See what the 12 volt output is. It has two 12 volt rails. 12 volt A, 18 amps. 12 volt B, 18 amps. So, probably a combined output of probably 25 to 30. 375 watt max output. Definitely a monster. Even has a PCI Express six pin video car connector. This thing is built like a tank. It's slap full of quality capacitors, niche cons on the primary, and a mixture of Ruby cons, I believe L cons on the secondary side. I see no failed capacitors. Everything looks perfectly fine to me. Now unfortunately because this power supply has um, two um, PCBs I can't easily recase it into a standard size case. If it just had a single PCB I could probably recase it. Pretty good size PFC coil there. Now this is not going to be an in-depth in -depth, um, teardown of this thing. Don't get me wrong there. Because I don't plan on tearing it down. I'm actually going to put it back together and, tr and try it. See how everything works. But I would like to know about that fan. Did this thing actually come from the factory like that? I believe it didn't. It's not often you find a power supply that you have to actually run um, off the motherboard. I'm going to show you something too while I'm at it. The rectifier bridge actually has a heat sink on it in this thing. That's how well built this thing is. Actually, heat sink just about everything needed to be heat synced. Things so crammed tight you can't really see. Main capacitors are 820 microfarads a piece. So definitely good filtering on the input here. And there's your look at the um, EMI filtering components on the PCB. That big component with the glue on it is actually the fuse. Even the fuse is gigantic in this thing. The freaking fuse is gigantic. It's unreal. The X capacitor over there is extremely large. It's got a single gigantic coil, which is going to have to be considered two small coils. I mean, the thing's a monster. And of course, you have some Y caps. And then that transfers over to the main PCB. Where you have the bridge rectifier, surge protection, which I'm sure it's in there somewhere. I can't really see it because there's some stuff. Your main caps and all that, all that kind of good stuff. So again, one more look at the back side. Yeah, it's getting to be a pretty long video over just a little bit of power supply review, but anyways. Before I wrap this up, I mean before I close this power supply back up, look at that resistor in the dead center. Normally resistors have color codes on them. This one actually has the resistance value printed on it. It says 47 ohms. It's just printed on there. That's very strange. But considering that I don't see anything wrong with this power supply, I'm going to put it back together and test it to see if the file standby comes alive and, of course, see if it turns on everything. Let me say I'm going to put this thing back together. Okay, I got the power supply back together and I got it plugged in. Let's go ahead and run some tests. First thing I'm going to test is a 5 volt standby rail. Make sure we're getting we're getting a decent voltage there. Now, of course, many of these loads are going to be, well, first, most of the loads will be um, 
the readings I meant to say will be unloaded values. Slide this over a little bit. Try to get you a look at my meter. What it is, I hook up a fan adapter to the fan and plugged it into the power supply so the fan would get power and run. And of course, when you're testing the power supply, your 5 volt standby rail is the purple wire on the main connector. You should be getting around 5 volts out of that. About 5.1. So, no problems there. I'm going to try to start the power supply with the jumper wire made out of paper clip. I got to short the green and black. It is not turning on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it discharge. I'll jump for the wiring and see if it comes on after replugging it in. So apparently, it was in fact the power supply. We're getting 5 volts standby, but it's not turning on. So the computer was pretty much still on the um, PC equivalent of the check engine light in a, that a car would throw when it has a code. And of course it's taken a good long time for those 820 microfarad capacitors to discharge. Yeah, this will take a while. <laughs> I'm going to plug it back in and see if the fan starts. Nothing. Not a thing. Nothing at all. At least the fans aren't spinning anyway. Let's check our other rails. 12 volts dead. 5 volts dead. Three point three is dead. Minus 12, we're getting point 12 out of it. <laughs> Not good. So apparently this Newton power supply has issues. Now I doubt it has anything to do with capacitors. As you may have seen, we just looked inside of it and it had really good capacitors in it. Mainly Rubicons. This is probably one of the strangest power supply pairs I've ever seen. I mean the thing was working two weeks ago. Usually when I have issues like this out of power supply it usually falls down to capacitors. Taking the cover off, you'll normally visual you'll see visual uh, failures on the capacitors with bulging tops. But in this case, as you saw, we had high quality capacitors, Rubicons and Altex in there. Not a single one had a bulging top. So yeah, know what this means? I'll be parting it out. Anyways. Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask them. Thanks for watching.